Okay, so you teach ukulele and your students are pretty good with playing a few chords now, but the problem comes when you try to get your class to do chord changes faster. Hey, what's up? Ryan back again, and this is Musically Speaking. Today we've got a special one for you. As we work on putting content out to you, we're really trying to think of useful, applicable, easy to use, easy to do activities, tips, tricks, and strategies to enhance and grow your music program. So leave a comment down below if there's an area of your program where you'd love some support. We are listening, and in order for this channel to grow, we need our Musically Speaking community to speak up. I'll say it again, Musically Speaking needs you, our MSC, to speak up. It's early, this channel is brand new, but we are all about inspiring music education by supporting you, the teacher. Okay, so you teach ukulele, and your students are pretty good with playing a few chords now, but the problem comes when you try to get your class to do chord changes faster. Oftentimes, students can make chord shapes, but they can't change chords fast enough to keep up with the tempo of a song. Which is why I came up with the 30 second race game. We all know that our students love games and they love a challenge, especially a challenge that they will be successful at. That's right, this game sets up your students to be successful. It's so simple. I've made a YouTube video that is a simple stopwatch that runs from zero to 30 seconds. At the beginning of class, you put two chords up on the board, likely the two chords to a song that maybe your class is working on. The idea is just to alternate back and forth between those two chords as many times as you can cleanly in that 30 seconds. Students count how many total chords they played. After the 30 seconds, the video asks your students how many chords they played and can they beat that score. The clock then restarts over for another 30 second round. The repetition pretty much guarantees a higher score at the end of the next 30 second round. What I tell my students is once you're doing 30 chords in 30 seconds, you can move on to two new chords. The video actually runs for about 10 minutes, and when your students first come in, it gives them a focused task to get started on. Because the clock keeps resetting, they just jump in on the next round. This will give you time to tune instruments, or them time to tune if you've got them tuning their own instruments. It gives you a couple minutes to handle any of those things that seem to always pop up at the beginning of the period. When I'm doing this in my program, I usually am considerate of the number of fingers each chord requires. So I may start with two one finger chords, C and A minor. If they can do two one finger chords, then I'll upgrade to a one finger chord and a two finger chord, uh, say C and F. You may want to focus specifically on the chords in the song you're trying to do, and obviously which chords you use is totally up to you. This game puts a number value on the rate at which your students can change chords. For your competitive students, this will appeal completely. Now for your less competitive students, I'll emphasize that students are only competing with themselves. Every student learns in different ways and at different speeds. We recognize that, we welcome that. And in an upcoming video, I'm gonna go into greater detail on why this instrument is perhaps one of the best tools to apply a differentiated approach to your music program, which is why you should probably subscribe. You don't wanna miss that, do you? Do you? I forgot to mention that the video also provides oral cues when it's time to start the next round, and oral cues for the last three seconds of that round. So if your students are focused on their playing, they'll still know when that round starts and ends. This is a powerful and self-motivating game that will see your students progress at a much faster pace. They'll gain confidence through the independence you're giving them to start the class on their own. And because it's on YouTube, they can even play at home. If you have any questions or comments about the game, be sure to leave them down below and stay tuned for my next video where I'll share part two to faster chord changes. And before we wrap up this video, we do wanna take a moment and say a huge thank you to Bridget Stevens for your constant support. 
Bridget has been sharing every video we've posted so far, and it is friends like you that are helping to grow this community. So thank you, Bridget. To get featured at the end of one of our videos, be sure to like, comment, and especially share our videos. We can't do this alone. We need your help. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.